guys, Mark with Think Insurance. Today we're going to talk about roofs and insurance. And will your insurance cover a roof? There's actually a several different answers to this. There's a no and then there's a yes and then there's a partial and then there's a maybe. So we'll go over those situations. There's actually a lot of little things a lot of people don't realize about roofs. And there's some tricks that some of these not so honest agents out there are doing or not even dishonest, just some of them are getting the premiums lower by changing some of these coverages. So let's dive right into it. The first thing your insurance is gonna do is they're gonna make a list of all of the different questions that they're gonna ask you, the underwriting guidelines. And in those is gonna be something along the lines of what year was your house built? How many square feet is it? Does it have a basement? All that stuff. One of those questions is about your roof. So it wants to know what the age of the roof is. When was it last replaced? Sometimes if it's a newer roof, then you're gonna to have to prove that it's newer. For example, if you have a roof that's typically within five years new, then the insurance company is gonna say, show proof of that. We want a receipt showing that that roof was replaced. And if you don't have it or you can't provide it, then you lose that discount. There's pretty large discount. It's usually a hundred or more dollars off of your policy. It's a percentage, but they'll give you a percentage off for having a new roof. It's a lower risk for them lower claims because the number one claim is water damage. So having a good clean roof newer is going to help you on your insurance cost. Now the thing is a lot of companies don't really care or ask questions beyond that five year period. So if your roof is 10, 12, 14, even 18 and 20 years old, they really don't care. They're not going to add a discount. They're not going to ask questions. They just assume usually with, within that 14 to 20 year span that you're going to have a good shaped roof. They're going to ask you what's the overall condition of your house. The way I ask it is I say, yes, what's the overall condition of your house? Good, better, best type thing. And then I also ask, is there any maintenance issues that an underwriter or an inspector would have an issue with? That leads me down that road to know, okay, not just the roof, but is there anything that we can think of that would stop us from being able to bind this policy? There's nothing worse if you're an agent than binding a policy three weeks or four weeks later, an inspector goes out, denies the whole thing and says, this is horrible. We can't do this or they send it to the underwriter and the underwriter turns around and says flat cancel, or the price is going up to twice, right? Now you've got to explain to the customer, this is different, that's different, this is why the price went up, this is why you're getting canceled, things like that. Now they will usually work with you if that happens, so that's, that's another video. As far as the roof's concerned, the age of the roof makes a large, large difference. Now will they cover it is the question. So the part of that is, is the pieces that they're going to look at when you have a claim is the number one thing that they're going to 100% of the time cover. If you read your paperwork, it should say something along the lines of sudden and incidental occurrences. That's a claim. So if you have a tree fall on your roof, or if you have something just impact the roof and damage it, that is typically covered. I obviously can't say 100,000% that it is, but I would bet hundred dollars on every single person's policy that I ever talked to that this is true. I've yet to not see that be true. It's just part of the insurance policy unless they have some sort of exclusion against it. I can't imagine that that would be the case in anyone's insurance policy in the U.S. So if something impacts the roof, damage it, you've got that. If water comes in and it's raining, something's happening, you've got that as well. This is where some of these agents are being a little bit tricky sometimes. Sometimes the customers want this. But what they do is when you look at your deductibles for your house insurance, you have two options. You have an all perils deductible, which is what it stands for, all the perils, theft, or theft vandalism, rain, fire, not flood, uh, all of that stuff is typically an all perils deductible. And then you have what's called a wind and hail deductible. So typically, I just think of it as roof and siding because there's not much else it can do but it would cover if a shed got blown over or something like that. If there was wind or hail that damaged the roof or ripped some shingles off, then that typically is gonna be a covered incidence. Now here's the part that a lot of people don't get. There's actually two pieces I wanna go over. The first being is that deductible is separate. So look very carefully whenever you're comparing quotes and I've lost clients to this and they didn't realize this and I've had clients come back because of this uh, is when the agent sells you a policy, you typically most commonly have a thousand dollar deductible for all perils. That's just across the board the most common. I would say 80% of the time that's what it is, maybe even 90. And then you have the wind and hail. If it's zero or there's nothing there, 
More commonly, that just means it's the same as your all perils. So if they didn't edit that line, which almost every policy I've written, it's just gonna show all perils deductible and then nothing because I didn't change the actual wind and hail deductible, so it defaults to that all perils deductible. And so by doing that, it gives them a thousand dollar deductible. On the other hand, you could lower the cost because roofs and siding are huge in insurance. Those are claims that happen and it's hard to go against them and fight them. So a lot of times they almost have to cover those. So if you raise that deductible, that's lowering the risk or the amount that insurance has to come out with, and they're gonna be happy about that. So you could do a 1% deductible, a 2% deductible, a five, $10,000 deductible. You have those choices. So for example, if your house is a $300,000 house, that's your replacement cost, not the value. Then you have 2% deductible, we'll say for wind and hail, that's $6,000 that you would out pocket if you had a claim. So it's 2% of dwelling A, which is your house, the replacement cost of your house. If you did 1%, then it's lower. If you do 5,000, it's 5,000, 10,000, 10,000. I have some clients that wanted 10,000. They just have enough funds to cover their own situation. So they're almost self-insuring themselves, but being legal within the, the loan that they've gotten that requires them to have insurance. So they want lower coverages, just enough to cover the house if something happened. They don't mind having a $10,000 deductible. Uh, kind of the nice life, right? <laughs> it's where we all hope to be one day. But that's really a choice that they have. Now that brings their price down a lot because they're not carrying that risk portion. That is where agents typically, some agents are using those deductibles because they don't explain them well enough. Uh, hopefully they are. If you're looking at it and you see it and you don't remember talking to them about it, you might want to have a conversation. Are you really looking out for my best interest? Because that will artificially, well, not even artificially, that will bring the price down. But if you didn't want that deductible, that 6,000, 8,000, $10,000 deductible, then you need to talk to your agent about that. Covering that, yes, they will cover the roofs in those situations. Keep in mind of those little tricks that they, the companies do. They've got those wind and hail deductibles. Uh, now, when you won't get it covered or you're gonna have a debate with your insurance is when the roof age is older than 14 and 20 years old. So somewhere in that range, once it gets to be like 14 years old, 18, 20, 25 years old, even if it's a 50 year roof, they're gonna have an inspector definitely look at it. What they're looking for is your shingles. If you have a shingled roof, which is the most common, they're gonna look for, are they fraying? Are they lifting? Because if they're lifting or fraying, that fell off or that wind blew off that shingle or something happened because of that roof because it wasn't maintained or you didn't realize that that roof wasn't in good shape anymore. It just ages, right? The wind, the hail, the the weather, the whatever it is, banging against the roof, all that stuff, that's gonna deteriorate and lower the, long, the longevity of your roof. And if that is noticeable, so you have multiple shingles lifting, then they're gonna deny it. They're not gonna cover that type of roof. That's more, that falls in that guidelines of maintenance. The insurance companies and the underwriters, they care almost as much about this non-coverage than anything else, which is pride of ownership. And that pride of ownership is basically taking care of any problems, fixing a leak instantly, stop getting to the shutoff valve and shutting it off, not letting the claim build up, things like that. Mowing the lawn, like they just, it's a clean house. That pride of ownership is very, very helpful. That's actually one of the questions a lot of companies ask is does the house show ongoing maintenance? Which is that, that de definition of pride of ownership, right? If it doesn't, a lot of companies won't even insure you. The risk is too high because there's unknown problems, all of that happens. So to get back to the final question, yes in that situation, no in that one. Now the maybe portion is there's actual coverages with some companies that do partial roofs. And what I mean by that is if you have damage, let's say you have a long, like just a rectangular house, right? And you have the typical gable roof. Now that gable roof, let's just say this side is damaged from the sun and deteriorated from the sun, where this one's shaded, there's no debris hitting it. Typically when it rains, it doesn't get as much rain for some reason, I don't know. But that side of the roof is worse. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna only replace that side of the roof in the claim. That's very, very common for an insurance to do. There's no reason they're gonna replace a partial roof. Here's the problem. They can't always get the exact same material if that roof was built 15 years ago and it's no longer making those style or that color of a roof or you're getting new shingles. Kind of like when you put paint up on a wall 
and then a year later you put paint the same paint up and it looks different. It's because it's not faded, it hasn't been in the sun, all of that. So same thing for your roof. Most commonly, they're gonna replace just that portion or even that little square, 10 shingles that got damaged. They're gonna fix that up, button it up, and you'll, that's why you see those little dark spots on people's roofs, is because they replace individual shingles based on that situation. If you are worried about something like that, most companies offer something called matching roof. What that means is if they cannot match that roof, it's all replaced. The whole thing comes off, whole new roof goes on, $8,000, $10,000, whatever that cost is, is based on the insurance and you just pay your deductible. Those are the reasons to know if it's insured and if you should file a claim. Those are the pieces that you should know about your deductible. And then also that's the part that you should know about what type of roof coverage you actually have. There was one last thing I wanted to mention, which is if you are curious about the age of your roof and the condition of your roof, or if you think you may have a claim, but it's only one specific spot, I highly recommend that you, if you think that it's a partial replacement or you're not quite sure, uh, just go to Google, type in free roof inspection or go to Serve Pro or MultiServe. Uh, those are kind of like the national brands that come out. You should be able to find one that's completely free. They usually don't charge anything to come inspect the roof. If they are charging, then I don't recommend necessarily doing that if you're unsure. There's no point in paying for something that you're not even sure you need at this point. Once you find that honest company that's willing to give you that advice, you just really gotta find it. So if you're not comfortable with the first estimate, get a second one. It doesn't hurt, especially when it's free. I hope this was helpful covering all the stuff about the roofs and what it should be and whether it's covered or not and all that stuff. Uh, definitely, if you guys have questions, put them in the comments below. I respond to every single question at the moment. I am getting a lot of subscribers lately, so I've almost got about 200 this month, which to some people isn't a lot, but to me it's amazing. I'm gonna, <laughs> All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.